Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Subnautica. Today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Instead of playing it live, what I did is I played for a couple hours and recorded the footage. I'm going to talk over it. This way we can get more done in one episode. I think this way the videos will be shorter and they'll have more content in them. We'll see. This is just a test. Leave in the comments which way you like better. Personally, I like this way better, but... Who knows, we can do anything. The first thing we're going to do today, and by the way, everything we're going to do today is at the bottom corner. You guys can see if you guys want to get a like a overall TLDR of the video. But here is the power cell charger fragments that we've been looking for for, what, the entire series? Like three or four episodes here, so I'm so glad I found these. When I found these, you could probably see the relief on my face. These took so long to find, but I did look up the coordinates and I finally did find them. We're on the second or third location. But those were really, really vital in getting and I finally got them. What I also did do is I went on a giant like resource run. So I my main focus was copper and silver because later in the episode, which is right now in front of your screen, we're gonna be making a lot of the electronics needed to make the power cell charger so a lot of the wiring kits and the computer chips which will also need a lot of those for some of the upgrades we're going to make mainly the pressure compensators so yeah that big silver run was very necessary because we did we are going to need a lot of silver and yeah it was really good i managed to get pretty lucky and i found a good amount i got maybe about half a locker full and over the course of the episode, I used a lot of it. But yeah, this at the side you saw earlier, we're going to do a lot of things. Probably the two biggest, most impactful ones are the two pressure modules. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Here you could see me putting down one of the first power cell chargers. Now we're going to make two of these. One in the base, one in the cyclops. So I can be charging four at a time, which is not that bad. But I want to have one on the Cyclops in case I run out of power. I could have some more on backup. And of course, some in the base. So whenever I'm working, I can just kind of go back and forth and have some. Now, you guys might not think this is important, but this is crucial. If we look in this chest here, you can see how many power cells I've made because I haven't been able to recharge them. That is a lot of wasted material. I've probably wasted so much copper and um, a, lot, a lot of like the silicone for those so much it's actually unbelievable i probably just like rid the world of all my copper another thing we're going to be making in this episode is a lot of the small upgrades that i don't know why i haven't made earlier like the whole reinforcements no idea why i didn't make these earlier but we're going to make them now and an interesting thing this is the first stalker i've ever killed so i was getting real close to my base and i decided you know what i'm gonna fight back for once so i did and it's just kind of squirming around dead which kind of sucks, but yeah. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, the, probably the thing that make is going to make the biggest impact overall in this episode is going to be those pressure modules. And real quickly, I did add some more solar panels on the base for more power because of that power cell charger. I'm going to need more power. So I'm going to add two. One there and one over here. Now the funny little thing about this one is I actually wanted to remove it. But I don't know if it's a bug or am I'm doing something wrong, but it wouldn't let me remove that one. It's got like a weird beam. I don't know if it's because it's getting blocked or something, but it's kind of weird. But with those, um, yeah, and for some reason my moon pool is flooded. No idea why. I don't know if maybe some of the stalkers run around hitting it. But here we're going to make a lot of the torpedoes and we're going to make the torpedo system for the sea moth that we're going to go ahead and test them and see what these torpedoes do this is the first time i've ever used these torpedoes which is kind of cool but here you'll be able to see the sea moth torpedo system is getting made which is kind of cool we'll go test them out in a little bit and the, the funny thing about these torpedoes is they're heavy on inventory space i actually had to drop them to have enough room for the things to make them which is kind of interesting but those mk3 pressure modules that we're going to make a little bit later they're going to make the seamoth go to 900 and the prawn suit to 1700 depth fun fact the prawn suit is the the thing that can go deepest in the game even deeper than the cyclops that's going to be vital to go down in like the deep, deep part to a lot of the alien bases or the precursor bases. It's going to be very vital. It's going to be really cool that we got them this episode. But right here, of course, we just stuck in the torpedo system. 
and yeah, you just go down and you shoot them. Uh, each Seamoth can hold four at a time, and you could like re-equip them at the front. You'll see it a little bit later. But what these torpedoes do, these vortex torpedoes, so when you shoot them, they kind of go out, and when they pop, they make like a little black hole, and any small creatures near it kind of get sucked in, and they just disappear. Just kind of scary, but yeah, they do affect the stalkers, which is kind of cool, especially those will be useful in the kelp biomes. But yeah, you could see up in the front, you could that's how you reload them, which is kind of cool. I'm definitely going to be using those. And here you could see me making a lot more electronics because the next thing we're going to do is make the pressure compensators. So, how you make these is, of course, you got to get all these materials together. You have to make the first pressure compensator in the moon pool you could see me here making it so the pressure compensator is all the way up top and then what you have to do is you have to make the mk2 pressure compensator and the mk3 compensator and you have to make both of those at this crafting station inside of our base so the first one is going to go in our seamoth and the second one a little bit later in the episode is going to go to our prawn suit and both of these are going to be very important for again going down really really deep for end game is going to be kind of cool and this one you just put in just like any other upgrade you go to the side here which is kind of hard to get to in the seamoth just kind of infuriating ouch you just kind of stick that boy in there so now the seamoth is at a crush depth of 900 not very deep to be honest still but it, especially for resource gathering up top it's going to be very very useful what we're going to do next is we're going to play around with the portals now this portal that i'm going to show you here I looked at it earlier and I didn't know how to activate it, but I gave it a little bit of thought and I thought, whoa, what about those fuel crystals? So that's what you do. You just bring one of these, stick that in there, and bam, the portal comes alive. Now, this portal isn't anything special. If you guys know, on this entire world, there's two main islands. This portal is on one of the islands. It pretty much takes you to a portal on the other island, and you'll see it in a minute here. I'll give like an outside view so you guys can kind of visualize it. So this one doesn't give you two, it's not very important, but it just shows the concept of how portals work in this game. And later, once we get deeper to the deeper alien cursor bases, we'll be able to activate a lot of these portals to get to and fro to a lot of the more advanced places. And the funny thing here, you guys can see my food at the bottom, I'm kind of dying. I actually do die right there, uh, which kind of sucks, but you know, I just come back and collect my things, which is no problem. Also to the base, I did add some reinforcement things to just add a little bit of reinforcement because why not? And another thing that I've been really, really looking into is a lot of the planting things. I've noticed a lot of people in a lot of their Let's Plays are grabbing food from plants they've planted inside their homes. And I've never done that before. So we're going to do that in a little bit. But here you could see me making another pressure compensator. We're going to have to go back. Obviously, again, make the MK2 and the MK3 once again, and those are not cheap. Again, I'm telling you, those are very expensive, so I can't make many. It's pretty hard making two, but now we do have the Crush Depth at a very good level for both the Prawn Suit and the Seamoth. But with the planting, I've seen a lot of people use that as like how to sustain themselves, and I've never really played around with it. And I'm pretty far in my playthrough, so this is probably around the time. So in a minute here, you'll see me plant a lot of the... We're going to plant the Bulbo plants. Those aren't the best, but they're okay. They Their stats are kind of wonky towards like food and water. They're kind of unbalanced, so they're not that good. But now you can see the prawn suit has a crush depth of 1,700, which is really, really good. Again, probably like the furthest we can get in-game, which is really, really nice. And here what I'm doing, I found... I don't know why my base breaks right here, but of course we'll fix it. And for some reason, I couldn't get the plants out of the pot. So what I did is I actually just deconstructed all the pots and just replanted them and you can actually see there at the side i did plant the bulbo trees and i'm letting them grow slowly but another random thing that we make is a high capacity o2 tank there goes my phone obviously up until this time you could see my h2 is at 75 that's just with the standard h uh h h2o tank or h2 whatever <laughs> i'm done with talking this is so i'm doing this so fast but yeah, we're going to make one. It's not super hard to make, so I thought, you know what, I might as well make it now. Right now, my H2 is at 75. Now, you guys will see when we put this in, it goes to 155. That almost doubles. That's pretty good, to be honest. That'll 
again, that doubles my time in the water, which is going to be really useful for exploring a lot of the like caves and stuff like that. It's going to be really, really good. And that's pretty much the last thing we do today. So this video is about 10 minutes. It was a lot quicker than my other ones. But just in this episode, we did way more than in any other episode. So I really do like this kind of video format. And with these bulbo trees, what you can do is obviously hit them until they break. And these do provide food. What you do is just replant the seeds. So infinite amount of food in the game. Easy peasy. But guys, if you did enjoy this style of video, make sure to like and comment. As a support to my channel. And I'll see you guys later. God bless and goodbye.